So now we're going to move on to uh, drive inputs, input functions, and outputs. Um, so these are things that you're going to program into the drive um, that will be controller dependent on what they want you uh, uh, doing. We'll go through some of the, the different functions that are available, how they work, uh, go over the inputs, the outputs, what conditions need to be met in order for those to be active. Uh, so to start out on drive inputs, uh, right away, uh, we've, th at the most basic level, we're going to have two options. You can either select uh, PNP or NPN style of inputs. For PNP, sometimes it's called sourcing. Uh, that's going to mean that uh, 24 volts DC at the input is going to correspond to on or active, and 0 volts is going to correspond to off or not active. That's pretty intuitive. However, NPN is going to mean just the opposite. 0 volts actually corresponds to the input being on or active, and 24 volts corresponds to it being off. Um, so sometimes that can kind of throw people for a little bit of a loop, because when you normally think something is active, you've, you have voltage at that input. Um, there are different theories on, on you know, which one is better, which one is safer. Um, ultimately, they, they both work. PNP is, is more popular, but we do have applications using NPN. Uh, diagnostics, uh, number four, this is going to show all of your, your inputs here, as well as number 10 is going to show uh, which profile is active. So if you're running digital or binary speed control and you're wondering uh, you know, which, which profile am I in, the active profile box will, will tell you that. The controller manufacturer should indicate if they are using PNP or NPN. Um, to, to indicate it, I do believe SmartRise uses some NPN and um, GAL, they'll use PNP, but um, the controller manufacturer should say if they're running uh, PNP or, or NPN. So some default input settings. This is going to start out with, with LI04, default is going to be no function. We saw that up here, we had to set that to uh, speed selection in order to run digital because we need those four uh, speed selection inputs for digital speed selection. We also have the, the up and down directions. Our, our default for, for um, inputs 5 and 6. Again, you notice that um, input uh, 8 is um, missing. We, uh, we're going to set that for the enable. Uh, we're not going to change that. Typical input settings, li 4 Input number one usually is going to mean inspection speed for analog or serial speed control. Uh, sometimes the controller manufacturer will, will set that to, uh, to run on, an, on inspection speed. So they'll use the, the drive actually for that. For digital and binary, um, some typical ones are going to be the speed selection. Again, for digital, we need four of the inputs. Binary, we only need three. Here's a diagram of the X2A terminal strip. Um, so this is going to show you uh, what, um, what, where all the inputs and the outputs are on the control card. I'll point out a few here. Your analog inputs are going to be on 1 and 2. So if you are using an analog uh, speed pattern, that's where that would come in at. Your programmable inputs are going to be on pins 10 through 13, as well as 14 and 15. Drive enable, pin 16. And then we also have a 24 volt uh, output on pin 20. And then we have the, the two um, digital outputs on pins 18 and 19, along with uh, two of the relays. Uh, now the relays you cannot interchange, uh, on, or you can't physically um, change the relays on the control card. All right, we're going to kind of go over the, the input functions now. Uh, things like NTS, ESD, ETS. All right, we'll start out with, with ETS, Emergency Terminal Slowdown. Uh, all this is is a, a, another uh, alternate slowdown uh, profile. Uh, how it's going to work is um, you will program your, your input for, for the ETS, and you will adjust that speed in special functions under LX17. So what's going to happen is you signal an, an ETS run, the encoder, Speed, if it's greater than the speed that you set in LX17, it's going to decelerate down to leveling speed in LSO2. If the encoder speed is, is less than that LX17 value, it's going to proceed as normal. If you are using a, 
uh, externally generated speed profile, uh, it will bypass that. So it will use the, the drive to generate the speed profile. So here's a graph of kind of what that, that looks like. So here you can see we dropped it here. The drive is going to look at what the encoder is doing. It's going to say, oh, and pass that LX17 value. I'm going to decelerate down to leveling speed here. Emergency slowdown, um, ESD. ETS, ESD, they all sound the same. Um, there are subtle, subtle differences, mostly in where the adjustments are going to be made. Uh, for both the ESD and the ETS, we'll use the same uh, decel and jerk rates. So that, that is handy there. And this is going to function uh, much, much the same. It's going to compare the, the speed. If it's greater than that, the speed that you had set it at, it's going to decelerate down to, to leveling here. All right, normal terminal slowdown, NTS. Um, so this you might have some experience with. Um, this is another alternate slowdown uh, profile. Uh, we can get up to, to three NTS thresholds. Adjustment, we're going to go to a different parameter group, select your um, mode that you're in, as well as the target speed, and then the speeds for your threshold, as well as the, the jerk rates. Those are going to be set in LS33 to 35. Those are different if you remember, than these guys here. Okay, so here is um, where you would select which mode you're in. Again, we've got uh, you know, different uh, selections here. You can just use one threshold uh, for your NTS. You can use up to three. What I mean by threshold is that same comparative um, speed here. This is just one threshold. So it looks at the speed here. It says, okay, I'm going faster than what I should be. But instead of going down to leveling speed, it's going to go down to the, the target speed at which you set. So this is what, what multiple thresholds look like. So you can set uh, different speeds for each threshold uh, so that the, when you signal this um, NTS run, it's going to look at the different <coughs> thresholds, kind of do a check at each one, and make sure that it's slowing down appropriately. Uh, if, if it misses one of those thresholds, Again, it's going to proceed down to the, the target speed at which you set. Uh, UPS operation, uh, uninterruptible power supply. Um, so if you're using a, a battery to um, back up your, uh, your power, if it, if it goes out, you would want to program this into your inputs. Uh, what this does is it, it bypasses a few of the protection measures that are inside the drive that you normally would see. In, in particular, uh, the carrier frequency is going to be lowered to, to 2 kilohertz. Now, we're probably going to hear that. It's going to sound loud. But in this case, we don't really care because we're just running under emergency power. We want to get the passengers out safely. Uh, we're going to reduce, have a reduced heating level at this level. That's why we're, we're going down to that. Uh, the single phase detection, a lot of times they're just using uh, single phase 230. Uh, that's fine. We can use that. But um, normally, you'd get an error. That's going to be turned off when this input is active. And then one other kind of cool thing, what it does is when you signal this, um, this operation, it's going to determine uh, which direction is the, the path of, of least resistance. Um, so depending upon if there's a full load, empty load, where it is in the hoistway, it's going to say, OK, it's easier to go down, so I'm just going to go down to the next floor. Some adjustment things, LS10 battery operation speed, so it's got its own speed uh, that, that you can set. Another note, if you're using the high, high voltage drive, um, you can run on the 230, uh, but you need to program it for, for that operation. Otherwise, else you're going to get that under, uh, under potential or under voltage error on your DC bus. And then external fault. Um, this one's pretty simple. Um, it just means that something external to the drive has faulted. A lot of times uh, where this is implemented is if a regen is being used. So they'll program this um, or hook this up for, for regen operation. So if the regen faults, you'll get an external fault on the drive. Um, if the controller manufacturer wishes to, to program something else on the controller side, they can also do that. But it just means that um, something external to the drive has, has faulted. Uh, we've got a lot of different output uh, functions that we can, can program, up to 23 different ones. Again, diagnostic screen number four, that's going to tell you 
what's active um, at any given time. So here I just selected some of the, the most popular ones and what uh, conditions uh, qualify these outputs to, to be act active here. So most common, drive on and drive ready. I think almost just about every controller manufacturer uses these as, as an output. So if you're wondering, okay, what, does, what needs to happen in the drive in order for the, the drive on uh, output to be active? We need the enable, the direction signal, the phase current check needs to have passed, and we need to have started modulation. Um, we need to have some current output, and then that brake release timer, LTL1, that needs to expire. So all of that needs to happen before the DRO turns on. All right, when it turns off um, on a normal run, it would be after the current hold timer, LT12. Um, right when that um, goes to uh, zero, that timer is actually going to start when the command speed goes to zero. So until your speed actually gets to a, a zero speed command at the end of the run, LT12 isn't going to start. And uh, as always, um, if a drive fault or the enable drops, these outputs will, will go low. Drive ready basically just means that there's no faults. Drive is ready to run. It'll turn off if you get a fault. Just sitting idle, you should be ready. At speed, so this one is going to be dictated by, uh, under your special functions programming menu, LX14. It's going to be a difference at which you set. Um, it j basically just means that your encoder speed is going to match the command speed up to that threshold. Turns off when you're outside of that threshold. Brake control and drive on are very, very similar. They're actually going to uh, turn on at the exact same time. The difference is where they expire. So it expires at LT12 here. It's going to expire at LT10. So it's going to expire a little bit sooner. Uh, and LT10, that's that uh, brake drop delay timer. Uh, the default output settings, uh, this is what uh, comes from KEB. Digital output 1, LO05 is going to be at speed. LO10 is going to be fault. 15 is going to be off. And then 20 is going to be set to brake control. And this is what's typically set. So most of the time, LO15 set to drive ready. LO20 is set to drive on. I just wanted to point out 24 to 26. That's where relay number one is, whether you have a normally open or normally, normally closed configuration for the relay. And then your two digital outputs, 18 and 19. All right, so I think we're going to take a break here. We've got two sections left. Um, so let's uh, figure on coming back in about uh, 10 minutes here.